Yuji and Yuta have no possible way of beating Ryu and Sukuna at all in the upcoming battles of JJK. I am aware that that is one heck of a statement to make off the bat, but it is simply true. So before we get into this, let me clarify. There's going to be some slight spoilers for chapter 249 going into this. We have the spoilers now. Everybody's talking about them, and I feel like it's a good way to build off the last chapter. So just be warned if you want to keep that like fresh and you only want to read the official translation, this is your time to duck out. For everybody else, let's go ahead. I think the thing that you need to keep in mind with JJK is that... It's really taken a turn within the last, oh, being realistic, 50 chapters of a series that was about progression and martial prowess and a lot of anything could happen in battles. They were very fast paced to with Shinjuku Showdown becoming an absolute crawl of a battle because we focused so much on really one fight for so long. And I think that you really have to capitalize on the statement that Sukuna is a near prime deity they already admit that and despite the fact that he has had next to no showings in most of either the manga or the anime as to why he would be that way in the modern era it has continued he has an unprecedented level of plot armor that isn't really explained and because of that there's no getting around that but even if we look at it from just an in-universe point if we look at the feats that he has accomplished, which I don't agree with, but I get to suck that up because I'm just a reader, Yuda and Yuji cannot beat him. The plan is currently that because, you know, Yuda and Yuji are now working together, Yuda has opened his domain expansion. That domain expansion will keep Sukuna busy, forcing him to use Hollow Wicker Basket to protect himself, while Yuji and Yuda will then bash on him using Yuda's unlimited amount of curse techniques while his domain is open, and Yuji tries to rip Sukuna's soul out of Megami. There's a couple of big problems with this. One, Yuda's technique is not strong enough to accomplish this. His technique is not constant attack like we've seen with some other domain expansions. It's when he has to physically hit him with the technique. And I'm going to go ahead and say the manifestation of those curse techniques. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on this at some point, but it's unlimited blade works from fate. The idea that Gege was reading or watching Fate while writing any part of this concerns me, because that's a tragedy, and those are terrible to read or watch the endings of. But putting that aside for a minute, his domain expansion does not incorporate enough of an element. They're just swords. I mean, you could at least make the case argument that in Fate, Unlimited Blade Works can be launched constantly. There's nothing emulating that here. Yuda has to pick up his swords and try and strike with them to form the technique. That is going to slow them down immensely, even with Yuda's immense speed. And then, you know, we're relying on Yuji to make a dent on Sukuna, and he's never, ever, ever made a dent on Ryam and Sukuna in the entirety of their known existence together. So I'm not holding out much hope on there. The last part of their plan requires that they are going to somehow salvage Megami. Given that Megami is mentally, physically, and spiritually broken at this point, I'm not holding out much hope on that. Don't get me wrong. I deeply hope for a happy ending of this series. I just don't believe Gege is going to give it to us in any measurable form. And everything about the way this has been written proven that. Now, for that to change, I would honestly have to say that we would have to turn this fight into, at very least, a three-on-one battle. Remember, though, more is better. If you could get Hikari plus Maki plus uh, Takaba on this that'd be perfect i think that altogether them mixed with yuji and yuda probably have a decent chance of beating sukuna because they can overcome his domain they can overcome his cutting attacks and they can keep him on enough of defensive that his curse technique you know reversal doesn't matter uh and then i think you might get another opportunity between the soul blade and yuji's new gloves to actually kill sukuna do i think that they're going to do that no no i don't but do i think it's the only way that's realistically going to happen Yes. Yes, I do. Of course, none of this really answers the question as to how they plan on ending this. I mean, I guess if you get Megami back, you don't have the inherent risk of the Culling Games ending and setting off the trap, but that doesn't really get rid of the barriers or anything. We don't know how to break that down yet. That's not even really been addressed. Um, and I will also point out here, there's no reason that Sukuna should want to set off the ending of this. He is not a character who's ever expressed any interest in long-term planning. If anything, most of his actions dictate that he has no interest in long-term planning. Why he wants to complete Kenjaku's dream and see that the world is permanently changed? I don't know. Maybe he's just bored, but it's not very well explained. So at this point, this battle is just 
I'm waiting for the Catch-22, which will be bad for us. And I think that there is a possibility of good Catch-22, but I don't think we're going to get it. But what do you think? Do you honestly think Yuta and Yuji could make a difference on Sukuna? Keep in mind, I'm talking about Sukuna as he is in Shinjuku Showdown. Not the Sukuna that we were presented with in Shibuya Incident. Not the Sukuna we've been presented with any other time he comes out. You know, the realistic, within proportions character that would have struggled and probably lost to Gojo. You know, the real character. Not this one that's at the end of the series and clearly has a ton of protection that he just doesn't have explanation for. 